Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Fad had yourselves a great day and a great ending to your day and having a great night out there, a great weekend so far. And I appreciate you folks joining me this evening as we discuss what could happen starting tomorrow into the next couple of days. We'll even discuss into next week some about the general pattern setting up and who has the chance, the best chance to see strong and severe storms as we get into next week. So we'll talk a little bit into the future, but we're going to focus a lot on this video on tomorrow, a lot on tomorrow, and then also a little bit into Monday too. We have a flooding risk that has now increased for areas of New England. We got some higher elevations in New England, uh, some mountain ranges, the Catskills, the Poconos, the Berkshires, the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains. Anyways, a lot of rain can fall in some of these areas, and we all know that elevation and lots of rain do not uh, job well together. You know, these this water flows down uh, these higher elevations into these small creeks, the rivers, and sometimes you have a flooding risk in some of these valley towns downstream from these higher elevations. So a, a lot of the video is going to be discussing that. Uh, we have a moderate risk, which is kind of like a level three out of four risk. Um, if you're comparing it like to the Storm Prediction Center kind of outlooks, risk for flash flooding. So it's a big deal. We need to figure it out. We need to discuss it. And uh, you guys need to be prepared for this in New England because this is something that's kind of uh, almost sneaky like uh, kind of arriving into the forecast, if you will. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the severe weather threat. We'll break it all down for you folks really focusing in on the next 48 hours. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. You guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put those in the comments below so I can do that. I can pray over it and others can do so too. Let's take a look at water vapor loop. What's driving this is a, is a stalling frontal boundary. It's going to stall out over areas of the eastern U.S. and uh, this is going to spark severe weather ahead of the boundary, the cold front on uh, areas of the deep south and areas of uh, like the mid-Atlantic and upper southeast portion of the country. Now up here, you're going to get a lot of showers and rain tomorrow that are going to move more from like the south to the north. Uh, but they're going to keep going over the same areas. Down here, like in the southeast, the deep south, these are going to have more of a, a west to east directional pull to them. So they'll move in and move out. They're not going to keep going over the same areas. But, you know, right now it shows kind of a similar setup as tomorrow. But you'll have some higher, higher end ingredients that's going to drive a, a higher severe weather threat for tomorrow. But you see these areas and why the explode on your screen. That is storm development that gets going along and ahead of this boundary in areas of the eastern U.S. And then if you look at this area right here that really gets cranked up, that is um, those uh, severe storms that we talked about that are going get, to get, get going, produce a tornado threat in areas of eastern Colorado, and eventually downstream in Oklahoma will have a damaging wind threat overnight tonight. Lots of rain can fall, so definitely keep your heads on the swivel down here. And we're watching some uh, northern, straight northerly flow up here out of Canada. We're watching almost like a, a polar vortex lobe. I know when you hear that, you're thinking cold air, but it's basically just a huge piece of energy dropping out, out of uh, down out of Canada. And uh, this is really going to crank up the flow aloft next week um, across areas of the Great Lakes region, the Ohio Valley, maybe the northeast, upper Midwest. And this is, I think, going to bring the chance for a multi-day period of severe weather as we get later into next week. So we'll talk about that when we have much more detail. Let's talk about the severe weather threat as we're getting into tomorrow. we got a slight risk down here in the deep south and a slight risk right here in the mid-Atlantic, which includes the Delmarva, uh, upper portions of the south, which I always, you know, always consider that like North Carolina. But, you know, the PD of South Carolina, all of central and eastern areas of North Carolina, eastern Virginia, the Delmarva regions of Maryland, uh, Delaware, and then Southeast PA. But I'm going to tell you, even in this marginal risk all the way up into New York State, there could be some pretty intense storms, you know, around Binghamton, Scranton, all the way up to Syracuse, Watertown, Albany. You guys could see a lot of a lot of strong storms tomorrow too. Basically, a line moves through, and then the rain kind of stalls out and starts really raining over the same areas over and over again. We'll talk about that here in a second when we compare some model guidance. The Deep South Kind of the same scenario. You're, you're going to have some kind of line of storms move through this area, but it's going to obviously move in and out. And uh, then we'll just have, in general, just pop-up showers and storms, too. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk in detail on this, too. And then it's kind of day one of maybe an active period in the northern portion of the country moving in. We could have some severe storms in northern Minnesota. We won't talk much on that at all, but you know, definitely be aware of that. We'll discuss that in tomorrow morning's video. 
So what we got here is the excessive rainfall outlook. We have a moderate risk, not only for tomorrow, but for Monday also. A moderate risk for excessive, uh, for flash flood guidance being exceeded, which means you have at least a 40% risk of flash flood guidance being met within 25 miles in the given location. Can't ignore the yellow either. That is a slight risk, um, which is a 15% risk of that same criteria. So um, this goes right through some of these higher elevations. Okay, this is a lot more uncommon. You know, we see a slight risk a lot. When you start to get into that moderate risk ex with the excessive rainfall outlook, um, there's a lot of horror stories of flooding in the New England area, even into areas of like um, obviously eastern um, um, eastern areas of Kentucky. Um, so we got to watch out with these events. You just never know when you're going to get another eastern Kentucky kind of event. That's why it's important that I meant that we need to talk about this a little bit more, uh, kind of a zoomed in look. It's almost like Google Maps, but you know we're looking at the excessive rainfall outlook. So as you can tell, um, this extends from Washington D.C. all the way up to almost pretty much the Canadian U.S. border here in Vermont. Okay, this includes sections of the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains in Vermont, uh, the Berkshires, um, includes. Um, also areas of kind of extreme northwestern Connecticut. Um, it, it cruises right through the um, Catskills, the Poconos of uh, northeast PA and northern areas of uh, New Jersey. Uh, so, you know, this includes, you know, not just the mountain ranges, but all these little small towns and communities downstream from these higher elevations. I mean, this is include all of pretty much eastern PA too. Harrisburg, Scranton. You need to take this serious, guys, okay? So this is... Definitely a flooding risk. And then, you know, don't ignore New York City. Things like this. But, I, but I'm really watching this region right in here. This is where I'm worried about. So um, let's uh, get a little bit more detail with this. Talk about New England first. Okay. So we'll start off tomorrow morning. Not a lot going on. It's, it's probably going to be raining in like West Virginia. But as we move through in time, I mean, as soon as 9, 10, 11 a.m., you got some storms cranking up. Uh, just east, uh, according to the H. Shapora model, just east of the Finger Lakes region. Um, these are really getting strong. Uh, this is starting to really dominate the central New York state area. And then look down here in Pennsylvania. Storms kind of really get going here. I would say if you back it up here, they get going as early as 11 a.m. You got some storms that develop kind of in southern areas of PA, uh, western Maryland, uh, northern Virginia, which we'll talk more in detail here in a second. And then they get strong pretty quickly. I mean, by the time we're at lunchtime, 1 p.m., you can have some powerful storms moving through areas of Washington, D.C., through the heart of Maryland, um, moving right towards Harrisburg early in the afternoon. These could be, be producing damaging winds, maybe some small hail, and a lot of rainfall. Uh, the precipitation values will be quite high in some of these areas, which means um, these storms will produce a lot of rain, which is why you got the flash flooding risk. And then you got this line of storms moving through Binghamton, uh, central areas of New York State, uh, heading right towards the Albany area. You might have some pop-up storms already cranking up around 3 p.m. and kind of central mass. But you stop it right here. You get pretty much a, a line of storms kind of broken up in New York State. But a line of storms extending from New York State all the way down to the Mid-Atlantic. And then it goes all the way down to eastern North Carolina, which I'll show you here in a second. But, um, you know, this is around 3 p.m. You got a strong to severe line of storms working its way through eastern PA. Um, blasting through the coastal regions of Maryland, knock on the doorstep of Delaware early uh, to mid-afternoon, probably late afternoon, I would say, Delaware. And then this is cruising through Delaware, and then it's making its way through to New Jersey. And watch what happens here. I'm going to put this in motion. Watch how all this rain really starts to add up in the afternoon, the evening, and you just get a slug of moisture that really pumps up through these areas of New York State. Um, these mountainous regions like the Catskills of um, the Poconos, the Catskills of New York State. Um, it's raining really hard in the Green Mountains here in Vermont. Um, the Berkshires, or do y'all say the Berkshires, the Berkshires? I think it's the Berkshires, but um, this is a lot of rain. I know I know you're seeing it and you're thinking, well, there's not a lot of red in there, but this is some tropical downpour kind of stuff. Um, it's raining really heavy on Long Island. It's around 11 p.m. At this point, you've already received multiple inches of rain, and it's still raining in these areas. And if you notice, at first, these storms are moving in. It, 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 in general, kind of a southwest to northeast movement. And then this frontal boundary kind of stalls, and then it just moves kind of more so south to north, right? 
Um, and then this is when a lot of rain can add up. We're waking up Monday morning and it's still raining in some of these areas. Okay, but this is getting out of our range. So, you know, a lot of model guidance agrees with this scenario. We will look at the FV3 model and we'll go out the Sunday morning. It shows the same kind of deal, kind of a line of storms developing um, in Pennsylvania, New York State, all the way down to Maryland, northern um, VA. And then it just is raining like crazy tomorrow afternoon um, up the I-95 corridor all the way up through these higher elevations of northeast PA, New York State, Vermont. And a lot of rain can fall. Same kind of deal. The These two models that I've been showing a lot over the last week or so pretty much agree. And if you look at the rainfall, okay, we'll look at PA and surrounding regions first. I mean, look look at the, um, the Poconos. Two to three inches, maybe as much as four inches of rain over the next 20. Uh, this is probably going to fall more so in a, I would say, this is between now and the next 48 hours, right? But this is probably going to fall more so in a in a 24-hour period. This only goes out the Tuesday morning, but most of this is going to fall probably in the 18 to 24-hour period. So I know you're thinking three to four inches of rain isn't a lot, but when it falls in a relatively short amount of time, it is a lot. Okay, so, you know, Maryland, you know, an inch or two of rain is possible, um, but the Poconos, Catskills, multiple inches of rain. You go to a, more, a better look at New York State, and, I mean, same thing. Look at look at here in these uh, eastern areas of New York State, you know. It's kind of up into the Adirondacks, um, the Green Mountains, three, four, five inches of rain. Uh, Central and Western Mass, two to three, four inches of rain. And remember, this is going to fall more so in like in a – an 18 hour time frame or so okay a couple inches of rain in new york city you guys are going to get a lot of rain fast up here okay so please please take all this rain serious um you just you just never know you never know you're going to get end up being one of these small towns or communities that gets flooded out let's hope nothing like that happens but i mean this is a lot of rain that's going to fall in a under a 24 hour period i think and it's still going to be raining in the tuesday so take this serious for you folks up in the uh, in the Northeast tomorrow. Let's talk about Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, surrounding regions. As we're starting out tomorrow morning, we're probably already going to be dealing with some rain in Western Virginia and West Virginia, uh, some showers, maybe some storms developing in Eastern Kentucky. And then we, as we make our way, I mean, this is going to get going pretty early. Um, as we make our way until around lunchtime, 1 p.m., some storms could be making their way through the eastern half of Virginia. Powerful storms probably getting going here in eastern North Carolina. There could be some strong storms in South Carolina, Georgia, but the Storm Prediction Center shows it well. There's going to be kind of a weird gap where I think there's not going to be as much storm coverage in these areas. I'm not sure if that's just because the atmosphere is just not as unstable in these regions. That's what I'm probably thinking. But if you're in eastern North Carolina, southeast Virginia, the Delmarva region, eastern VA, expect a powerful line of storms to potentially rock your area tomorrow afternoon through early evening. And then as this moves through, maybe a more consolidated area of rain begins to move in um, out of the west into like Atlanta. You guys might go to sleep tomorrow and have a rainy night tomorrow in Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg area, the western mountains of NC, uh, eastern Tennessee, and then you could get some rain overnight in the Carolinas potentially. Potentially. Everything's a big potential with this. So be aware of these storms in this area tomorrow. Um, I favor definitely eastern North Carolina and eastern Virginia, but you know we could get some pop-up strong and severe storms in Georgia and South Carolina, eastern Tennessee, eastern uh, Kentucky tomorrow also. This is the area that has a higher chance of severe weather, and really what we watch for is there's probably going to be some kind of line of storms. Is this left? Is this going to be the leftover energy from what cruises over Oklahoma tonight? More than likely, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if this lasts all the way from almost Colorado, almost all the way to the Gulf coastline. we got to see what's going to happen or if this is just a totally different area of storms. But could be waking up to some stormy, stormy conditions tomorrow morning, gusty winds, some small hail, in areas of Little Rock Point South. And then we watch as this area of storms tries to rejuvenate itself just after lunchtime tomorrow. Memphis, um, up here to Jonesboro, uh, Dyersburg, uh, the Boot Hill, Missouri. You guys could be dealing with some storms just after lunchtime tomorrow. This is heading uh, towards the Jackson area, sweeping through areas of central Louisiana too. And if you notice, this is just one area of storms really. It's not like you got a huge area of convection like the last few days. This is 
not cut and dry, but you do have a lot of moisture in the northern Gulf of Mexico and along the Gulf coastline. But really, I think the slight risk is driven off this line of storms that could sweep through this area. And then this makes it into Alabama, I would say, late afternoon, evening. So, you know, Huntsville, Florence, up to Nashville, um, down to Mobile, uh, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, even Montgomery. You guys could see a stormy uh, late afternoon, evening tomorrow. And then we watch as this tries to enter Georgia and the Carolinas later tomorrow evening and overnight tomorrow night. Uh, this could drop a lot of rain. Um, rainfall between now and the next 48 hours, anywhere from one to three inches of rain from Arkansas, northern Louisiana, Mississippi, areas of Tennessee, all the way into Alabama to the Panhandle, Florida. So a lot of rain could fall with this too. Moving into uh, Monday, we do have a severe weather threat. Look at this weird little gap here. <laughs> so uh, another severe weather threat is possible in the northeast and then just general summer flow down here in the deep south and the southeast. And then we'll talk more on what could happen in the middle of the country, probably more so tomorrow. There's still some uh, differences in models. But what I can tell you is we go to day four onward, um, the confidence decreases. But, you know, if you read the discussion, which is available to the public, to all you guys, just type in Storm Prediction Center on Google, it mentions the reason they don't have a 15% risk put on like day four or five or six it's just because the confidence is low in what geographical area sees the storms. But if you look at the 500 millibar flow, which uh, really just tells us where the best lift is for storms, the best kinematics, and we'll start off Monday afternoon, um, you know, you're probably going to get some, this is a big cyclone dropping down out of Canada. You're probably going to get some storms that are possible somewhere in the upper portion or central portion of the country. We get into uh, Tuesday and uh, I would argue that there's probably some storms ongoing in this region, uh, down here into the Great Lakes region, potentially some stormy times. And then we get into Wednesday, and I think that we potentially could have some significant severe weather across portions of the Midwest, Iowa, Illinois. We watch. We got to watch Wednesday. I want to watch Wednesday for this region. Uh, you could have some pulses of energy into the Northeast, and then you get into Thursday. Same kind of deal. You got this swath of 500 millibar flow. Think of this as lift for storms. And you just got to watch for any kind of ripples in the pressure gradients. You could have severe weather in Wyoming, Montana. Along this whole corridor is possible. Okay. And then, you know, we're getting into kind of no man's land of Friday. But it looks like this little cyclone kind of gets locked in and throws a corridor of uh, kinematics that supports severe weather in the northern portion of the country, which... This is the area of the country that is more typical for this time of the year. That's all I got. I'll be with you guys tomorrow morning. God bless all y'all. Have a great Saturday evening, and I'll talk to you soon.